Hello guys, it's February 19, 2021, and you're watching me, Nikki Yu, also known as Faces Trader. This is the Global Market Update. It's a Friday, so just wanted you to know that every Friday, Awesome 10X would like to invite you for a 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Philippine time, Awesome 10X free Friday class. So we always have a one-hour a video every day that's actually replayed on our YouTube channel wherein you can actually understand what's happening in the markets and yet you get a deep dive, uh, something that we do every single day to our Inner Circle members. So every Friday, we give you a preview, uh, an exact class that you can share to your friends and watch anytime you want. So I just wanted to share, if this is the first time, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share Awesome 10X to your friends and help them also Awesome 10X their wealth, their finances, invest globally, and do it over time, not overnight. All right, so let's begin. What happened in the Philippine? Uh, sorry, what happened in the U.S. market? There was a hearing last night. Um, you've got the GameStop actually getting uh, into a market hearing. Money stuff. Uh, Congress is one thing to talk about GameStop. That was February 18, 2021. Has the GameStop? Remember GameStop. So it started the year at 18, went as high as $500 because people on Wall Street Bets Forum bought a lot of it. There was a, a gamma squeeze, a short squeeze, and then brokerage firms like had to restrict everyone because the stock got so volatile. And then GameStop last night closed at about $40. So from about $500 back to $40 or a 90% 90 drop, can it go down to $4? All right. The whole thing was interesting and often very funny, but I do not think it is very important. Seems fine. The stock market cannot only be a casino. It has to serve the price of discovery, capital formation, all that good stuff. But um, all right, so there's a lot of opinion columns about the Robin Hood, about the situation. Let's try to watch what exactly happened. This is actually a Reddit reaction. Let's try to watch exactly what happened last night on this hearing. Watch this together with me. Play. If, uh, if there was forced liquidation, uh, at the very least, it would have resulted in a total lack of access to the markets for your, your constituents. constituents. Not just to the 13 securities that we restricted buying in. Right. So this would have been an enormous catastrophe for Robinhood, correct? And the fund. Correct. And, and not just Robinhood, but the over 13 million customers that we serve. Finally, there were a lot of questions about Robinhood's role in making investing like gambling or like a video game. The CEO says that they don't consider what Robinhood provides to be, quote, gamification. They take investing seriously. Melissa, back to you. Kate, thank you. Kate Rooney, who's been on top of the story from the start. Of course, the Reddit community following along and at no loss for words. Steve Kovac has been parsing the comments. Steve, what they have to say. Oh, boy. Um, Reddit itself didn't get too much attention in that hearing, but boy, it was like the Super Bowl for them in the Reddit communities, especially on Wall Street bets. A lot of praise for what we we're hearing from Roaring Kitty. Um, hilarious memes, everything you'd expect, um, especially when he came out and said he liked the stock and that he was going to hold on to it and really put forward his investment thesis. And then when it came to Vlad, not so much. Uh, a lot of things I can't tell you on national television, what these Redditors were saying about him, but a lot of anger still directed at him for restricting those shares, uh, trade. Uh, one, you know, what are retail traders allowed to do in terms of research, communication, uh, and actually trading? And then two is what constitutes kind of market manipulation and what doesn't. Uh, I think that what we really got to have a conversation about here is if we allow for Wall Street to put out research to short a stock and then announce it and then close out trades when the stock goes down, whether the allegations are true or not, and all these things can be considered market manipulation, just like we're trying to levy that against literally kids who are sitting at home with their home who are talking on a forum. And so I think we just have to have a, a real conversation in this country about do we want the little guy to have a seat at the table or not? The American dream should be that anyone from anywhere can come to the United States and they can sit and they can participate in our financial markets and have the ability to drive returns. And so if you read kind of the Roaring Kitty um, you know, story, he was literally unemployed for two years and he was trading and he was able to actually drive a financial return. He's a good investor. And if you look at the research and the investment thesis that he laid out, it was a good thesis. And he ended up being right. And Wall Street was 
All right. Um, I'm going to stop you right there. Um, you know, I think like America loves to belittle the little guys, underestimate. Actually, not really Americans. I'd say that the whole world, the whole world loves to belittle the armchair investor, the one who's just on screen using non-Bloomberg terminals, trying to invest for himself, trying to just find his deep effing value. And that's exactly what Roaring Kitty did. He's not trying to manipulate the stock, even if everyone says so. He bought with his own diamond, vibranium hands, adamantium hands, $4 below, just like Michael Burry. Why exactly are we crucifying people who are just doing their own job? So, um, yeah, that's just news. Anyway, it's a... Uh, Reddit traders, of course, have a uh, have a lot of battle with um with um with a lot of people, and um you know, sorry, let's stop this. Anyway, um, lawmakers held a hearing. All of these ads, stop this. Anyway, all ads, la la. Anyway, um, the point is that I think that everybody has to understand that Roaring Kitty explaining his GME investment theory out in the public, Congress questioning Robin Hood, hedge funds saying that they've got to vindicate themselves. It's not going to end. Like at the end of the day, everybody has to know, do not underestimate the Wall Street bets. Do not underestimate people who are on YouTube trying their very best to find awesome 10x companies for themselves for you, for the entire world, it's a do-it-yourself kind of journey. So anyway, let's go. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the markets. People are saying, "Well, why are the markets down last night?" Well, you know me. I think I told you that there has been quite a lot of times that we've been already seeing the market topish on certain sectors. So, example, I'm telling you something. Solar, weed. Topish, awesome, then X, pigs get slaughtered. I said this when I said that awesome, then X said that pigs get slaughtered. January, pigs deserve to get slaughtered. January 18, 2021, profit taking on solars and some weed. Let's take a look at the charts of our solars. Let's take a look at that. Um, I have a list. I'm going to show it to you. Solar, uh, electric, all of those solar renewable energy names. Okay. Da -da 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 -dun, da -da 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 -dun. Sun Power down 16%. FSL down 16%. Arcimodo down 13%. Rene Solar, Plug Power, Sun Run, Canadian Solar. Well, Nano Dimension is not a solar company. I just put it there, but this is additive manufacturing. Solo Electromechanical Vehicles, Jinka Solar, Solar Edge, Xpeng, Neo, la 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 la. All right, that's a day drop performance for the week. They're dropping hard, 30% for the month. They're dropping hard. Year to date, they are losing money. But in the last year or so, we're talking about 10x moves, 15x moves, 1,000% moves. Who is there to complain the drop? Only the late chasers, the people who don't know awesome 10x. We said January 18, profit taking on solars. What exactly happened? Listen to awesome 10x. We're right. Run. When we say run from Sun Run, debut, follow. January 18, here, 87 was a lower high. And it was already, already 10x from $80 is a resistance. We said January 18. This is January 18, guys. January 18, we said pigs get slaughtered. Sell at 88, sell at 90. Fell down to 70, you had a third chance to sell again at 83. If you fail to buy, uh, if you fail to sell at 83, the market has been so generous to you. And you are just a fucking deep one. Sorry, wrong cursing. But the point is 83 going down to $60 all the way to 56. You see that the market right now is in a consolidation zone for your sun run. After a 10x move, $8 to $90, well, what do you expect? 
people, it's gonna be a profit taking mode from 50 to 80. You gotta buy at $50 and you gotta sell at $80. So it's not anymore a 10x move, but you can make 50% on the way down, up, down, up, la la la. Exactly. Um, some companies, of course, cannot get their weight supported. Why is it that some companies would fall hard? Well, damn it. $2 went to $28. I thought that $20 was already 10x. It even went 28. The market is so generous. And only the people who don't want to take profits will be slaughtered like a pig. Slaughter them heavily. Let them die. Let them go down, all the way down, because they deserve to get slaughtered for their greediness. Of course, sometimes you wonder, why did I sell at $8? Some people even sold at $4. You know, that's the mistake of other people who don't think about 10x. With 1x, you're so happy already getting in at $2, hitting at $4, 100% within just a month. They're already selling, only to see their shares go for $8, $16, $24. Ta-da! $4,000, $2,000 is still $18,000. It's still frothy, guys. It's frothy to the max. And therefore, do not wonder why any rallies of f -cell is going to go down. In fact, the cannabis names we said were already topish to begin with. Sell here, sell there, even sell all the way 27, all the way to 15. Because if you truly believe in the legalization of marijuana... The answer for your buying entries was still here at about four to seven, eight dollars. Not at fifteen, not at twenty-five, not at fifty dollars. You are a crazy anyway. I don't know. You're thinking, I don't know. I don't even know how you make money nowadays. That's of course wrong. You chase, you deserve to lose money. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I think about the markets right now. What you're seeing is actually healthy. It's healthy that what we predict is extended are falling down. Meanwhile, the companies that are not extended are, of course, getting rotated from. Um, did any? Did everything actually fall last night? The answer is no. Nanquest, Atlas, Atlas Crest Investment, Alder, which is Drone Vault, got up. Faro went up. CM Life Sciences went up. Raven was up. Let me show you a few companies that uh, actually was not. Uh, being sold off because they weren't in the insanity mode. Raven Industries, we said, was a buy here at 33. Lo and behold, last night, while the market was tanking into a Red Sea, Raven Industries was like a blue ocean where all the money is going into, right? Okay, this is a farming robot. Nanquest, I would agree, was actually more of a chase already on my part. I knew that this was a this is a cancer-related play. Notice these are going up from seven all the way to well, forty dollars. Not yet seventy dollars, but um, of course, I was a little bit. You know, I was okay. I'm not that late, but I'm not early either. I think the buying was here about twenty dollars. I still high. Uh, I still went in at about twenty-eight with the leeway to enter at twenty dollars. By the way, but you could see that this was the greed mode. We're hitting in the euphoria zone for NatQuest and maybe insanity zone within the next couple of days or months. Of course, with insanity, don't expect that that vertical rise will actually just take off without a drop. So let's say this 36 does go to 56. Awesome Tenex is already ready to sell at 55 or $60. Now, of course, 36 can also go down to 25. What, what are you going to do? Of course, I think that 25, a drop to about $20 is more of an opportunity rather than a selling area. So um, I do think that the market is now appreciative of many uh, of many cancer-related plays. So this is one company that is actually benefiting. For those who don't know who Nanquest is, Nanquest, let's read it. What does Nanquest do? News. Um, Immunity Bio and Nanquest announced an FDA authorization in being mixed COVID-19 vaccine trials. So should you buy Nanquest? All right. So right now, actually, you're seeing a lot of companies that are able to solve uh, vaccine-related problems or even cancer therapies go up. What exactly happened, example, for Novan? We were saying Novan was about 90 cents. We also de de depicted that there was a resistance here about $2 or 240 Even at 190 last night, what you can see here is not really euphoria or insanity. This is the greed. This is the euphoria. It's still in euphoria mode. It's not yet in the insane zone, meaning um, those who have Novan here about 
are not required to sell at two dollars just because you're up a hundred percent. Now, some people, it's okay. Like I know that I always tell people who are in awesome tenex, selling is really an art. Sometimes I sell a hundred percent, it goes five hundred percent. I feel bad. So what I do is it's up a hundred percent. I trim. So trimming is a, a, no, a normal option that I do. I trim and then I really let my winners go up, 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 up in a way. Especially if I know I'm early. Of course, if you're if you're early in Novan, let's say you entered at one dollar below, you're not in a hurry to take profits. In fact, you're you're here to actually take an opportunity if this one goes down to one fifty, knowing that you're right because it's gonna go where three dollars, three fifty, four dollars, five dollars, right? So. You're of the opportunity not to really unload all of your shares, but more in the importance of holding on to your babies as if they're going to grow up to be adults. You're in the infant zone. It's going to go adult mode. So you want to actually go from Charmander to Charmillion to Charizard zone. Take a look at some companies. Okay, Nanquest says here, the Science Advisory Board staff is saying that February 12th last week, it has authorized Immunity Bio and NanQuest to expand the phase one testing of bivalent human adenovirus 5, also known as HAD5 T cell COVID 19 vaccine. A multi cohort trial is currently underway. Expansion will study a subcutaneous version of the vaccine in order to review adding sublingual boost. In a second phase one study, the first firms will ex examine adding an oral boost, subcutaneous prime administration, la la la, they will enroll another 100 participants to complete the viral clearance of SARS-CoV-2 in lung and nasal passages. Immunity Bio is using Microsoft software to visualize the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. They are also merging who is Immunity Bio. Let's read the website of Immunity Bio. Nanquest is also scaling up their COVID-19 stem cell therapy. All right. So uh, the clue, guys, is that try to check out a lot of stem cell related companies. You might actually 10x, 20x, 50x your money or just simply accept the fact that Awesome 10x Inner Circle can do it for you. And you can just join, register Awesome 10x and we'll give you some leading companies that you might want to enter into your portfolio. Immunotherapy, it says here, immunotherapy platforms, they've got activated Nanquest, NK and T cells, activated M1 macrophages, memory T cells. We establish immunity bio to advance the next generation of immunotherapies to address serious unmet needs within oncology and infectious diseases. The basis is T cell based immunotherapies such as in checkpoint inhibitors, chimeric antigen receptor T cells, or CAR T cells. Fundamentally, we promote adaptive immune responses, activating the cytokines, which is a natural killer, or NK cells, T cells, tumoricidal macrophages, seeking to establish immunological memory to support long term protection against disease. You know, actually, I tried to study immunotherapy not because I wanted to, but my brother actually had cancer. I have relatives who had cancer. I was not looking on cancer to actually invest on cancer early on. Um, it was a personal decision to just understand these cancer plays because if it can save my 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 relative's life, of course, we're going to have to read and study what exactly is available in the market public uh and what it's not really about investing in it. it's really about saving a life so um yeah um, i'm happy to say that my brother has been healed not by immunotherapy but i mean i'm happy to say that if you get uh, uh you know i think next time car t cells spear t cells these are going to be affordable and it's actually going to save people's lives what's important is that you know that you're investing in medical breakthroughs you can lose money 5%, 20%, 50%. What's the, what's the reward though? If you get the, the life-saving drugs at the cheaper cost eventually, because right now the, the world is actually transitioning into using deep learning. We're talking about AI. We talked about this, the, the, the genomics explained. We talk about ARK Invest, believing in biogenomics. We also believe in the same thing. And we actually share it in a free Friday class. Now, of course, after free Friday classes, we do try to deep dive more companies in a deeper mode. There is what you call base editing. There is what you call genetic editing. You can learn about spare T cells, CAR T, 
learn more and invest in companies that you can actually see a potential 10x reward now of course you don't want to invest so solely on just one company so you want to actually diversify 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 how about so you've heard me say okay arsimoto is falling down january 18 what exactly was the price of january 18 somewhere here at about january 18 we're already saying that about 25 dollars you know, um, all right. Well, uh, well, yeah, you could see that this has been moving up, but actually at $30, these movements, look, we are entering at five. This one went seven X, right? So um, at some point in time, even the people who got in late at 13 still managed to make a hundred percent. So it was obvious that you want to actually be profit taking, but take note, after selling at $32, this is an area point right now. Arsimoto here, but $20, even if it goes down to $17, is actually more of an opportunity to go back to its rightful place and be an ascending uptrend where it is really supposed to be, right? So um, what happened here is just really people getting so bullish and then, of course, the mean reversion. So there's nothing wrong, really. Like, you want to be buying here at about 18 20 if you believe that people will have a last mile delivery solution and the liberator, aka Arsimoto, is going to be a, a perfect answer to that um, idea. Of course, right now you're seeing companies that are new. This is something that I haven't studied. This one went up last night, Greenland Technologies. Take note what happened here. From $2, rose to $26. It even rallied from $8 to $26 last night. Of course, got and sold down at $14. But what exactly did Greenland Technologies do to prompt people to buy it up last night? So let's read the news on Greenland Technologies and let's go to the website as well. So there was actually um, a news last night that it was actually working with SOCMA. Let's read this together. They're going to offer integrated electric drive train. So November, they reported their results, expecting increases, drivetrain systems. They're going to ramp up over 800 units, launching a new division, entering the electric industrial vehicle market. Let's read all about the Greenland. So within the website, GTech is saying that they are a leading developer and manufacturer of power and driving systems for material handling equipment. We create quality solutions. We have the capability. We're investing in the future. So um, there's a lot of stuff inside. Let's read the news first. The specific news last night was supporting the U.S. production of electric vehicles. We're talking about a company that will manufacture drivetrain systems, material handling machineries and vehicles, and SOCMA, which is South China Heavy Machinery Company, which is a leading company in Fujian, China, Fujian, guys, it's Fujian. I am hailing from, well, my ancestors came from the Fujian province. It was a province in China, and uh, we traveled from China all the way to the Philippines. So I am a Chinese citizen. Uh, sorry, I'm a Filipino Chinese. Uh, by blood, I'm Chinese. Anyway, um, what else? It says here that the agreement represents a commitment by Greenland to invest in the U.S. as a key center of innovation in the global electric vehicle market. They are utilizing the supply chain to support the production of electric industrial vehicles. What exactly are these electric industrial vehicles? Can we see the looks of this Greenland electric industrial vehicles? All right, Greenland, Greenland Tech. Can I see like the this cooperation of electric industrial vehicles? Okay, it looks like this. Um, it's supposed to help these types of cars. Um, you can see the pictures, right? Uh, whether it be a Rivian, whether it be a Changzo. What you have to understand is that if you are making the parts within these cars, are you going to make a lot of money if we go 500 million vehicles someday in the future? I think the answer there is a yes. So the market is just um, consequently just buying a company that can triple their money, that can tenfold their money because it is a company that can do that. Um, all right, it enters the market. I need to know this. Um, Mr. Wang, the CEO commented, we are very excited to be formally launching our new division. This is the division that will enter the electric industrial vehicle market. 
So they can now leverage the company's R&D track record. They have an extensive IP. They've got state-of-the-art manufacturing capability to help this movement. The industry is expected to be $170 billion by 2027 because US, China, Europe has 70% market share of the market. And China is the fastest growing market. So they're gonna use and leverage your expertise and invaluable customer relationships. They are a developer, a manufacturer of transmission and drivetrain systems for electric vehicles, as well as electric forklift trucks. So the company's clean energy batteries, lithium systems require less maintenance, charge faster, efficient, more efficiently, longer than lead acid power. Just visit gtechtech.com. All right, you can learn more, you can understand more. They even said here in December, they're wrapping up over 800 units in these electric forklift trucks, drivetrain systems. All right, so um, I'm pretty sure you uncover more. First impressions do last, okay? What you can see here, the results. All right, these results are third quarter 2020. Says here that Raymond Wang, we're pleased with the strong growth of our business despite the COVID-19. We are able to launch our robotic cargo carriers. We believe that this represents a major long-term growth opportunity. We expect a multi-year driver of revenue growth and expansion. The CFO said our team has done an excellent job ending the third quarter with a stronger financial position. Our revenues are now $17 million. This is a grand total increase of uh, 38% compared to last year's $12 million. Now, um, also, we are going to, um, you know, our costs increase 30%, but that's because, of course, our revenues increased 38 The gross profit is already $3 million and approximately 70% up from last year. Gross margin is significantly improving to 20%. Uh, income has been growing. We have cash. We don't need to actually borrow money. Net income is okay, la la la. So the business outlook is expansion, long-term demand from customers. You can see these things. For the nine months ended, our revenue is $42 million. Our gross profits are 8.2. Net income could double and triple within the next couple of years. So there. Um, Sokma. All right. This is a very huge news. Sokma. Okay. Uh, that's the news. This is Sokma. You could see these trucks. Sock machinery, very clear. Uh, these are some forklifts, right? It's counterbalancing heavy duty, telescopic forklift, company profile, let's gather the fireflies, Puchen South China, heavy machinery, manufacturing, blah, 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 blah. All right, you can learn more, but I, I think like it's very clear to you that the market is simply responding that, hey, Greenland is such a great company and GTEC right now at $14 is not yet in the most expensive time so it's an all-time high yes but at the end of the day if they're gonna grow further it is just a manufacturing vehicle that's gonna grow in time congratulations to those who have it at three or eight but even at 14 dollars all the way to eight dollars i think the answer is very clear the upside is larger than the downside. And we do not actually are, we're not penny wise. Awesome 10X is not penny wise. We don't need to buy the last peak, I mean the last bottom and sell at the highest peak to make money, guys. You just need to identify a secular trend, identify a great company, and end of the day, make some money investing long term in that secular trend. We're talking about secular trend years and years in the making. Okay, um, there's more companies to actually share. I might actually share some later on. So um, hope that you learned something today. GTEC, is GTEC a buy? Awesome Tenex thinks so. Uh, there's more companies to learn about. Hope that you have a great evening. Uh, see you later on. Uh, awesome Tenex is a 5.30. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye-bye.